Welcome to another edition of Politics and Right. I'm Egberto Willis, your host. Today, we are honored to have with us Stephanie Coleman. Stephanie Coleman yeah. is the publisher of Trey Magazine. It is the definitive voice of the community. While the magazine is, was born out of Third, word, Third Ward, Houston, mm -hmm. it, is a, it is national in scope. Stephanie is also the co-host of KPFT 90.1 FM, Houston's program, Open Journal. KPFT, Indeed. for all of you know, it's a Pacifica Network station. Stephanie, thank you so kind of for being on Politics Done Right. Ah, uh, Egberto, it's always an honor and a pleasure. <laughs> Glad to be here. Well, look, man, let me tell you, I got a copy of your magazine several, several months ago when mm -hmm. you used to distribute it in paper. And I mean, you work that magazine like nobody else. There is her magazine tray. <laughs> and I okay. remember bringing it on to KPFT and looking at them like, wow, it was so well done. And it wasn't just okay. about social. It, it had just about every subject. Why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, the foundation of your magazine and where do we go with it? Oh, well, I appreciate the opportunity to meet you again. I, I miss you since we don't have our sort of shared space anymore. Um, I'm real excited to be with your listeners. Um, Trey is the definitive voice that has been our, our goal. I moved back to Houston for those um, who don't know necessarily what Third Ward is. It's a neighborhood, a historic African-American neighborhood within the Houston area. Came back and just saw such a disparity in voice that community had all this bandwidth, all of this capacity, all of these amazing stories to tell, but mainstream networks minus you know, KPFT where we were on, um, had a slant on every good story. It was always totally distorted. And as I talked about, well, what we need to do next and what could we do, someone said, and, I, and more importantly, I was saying, what, why aren't we doing? And someone said, well, why don't you do it? <laughs> So out of that was born, um, put your money where your mouth is and put together something that really is as inclusive as um, I would hope. And so with that, every story is politics, government, um, money, lifestyle, culture. We've had writers as young as seven um, and as old as 82, uh, allowing people who have bandwidth and capacity to connect. Um, we are a microcosm of bigger issues. And if we could deal with it locally, then maybe we can empower individuals to understand that they can make an impact nationally and even globally. So that is kind of the publication at a glance. Well, I mean, when I saw the publication the first time, I don't know if you remember, I was sitting down in a green room at KPFT and it's like, wow, this is great because it covered just about every, you know, every aspect of one's yeah. life. You know, in other words, yeah. it's not rich. You know, you come on politics, then right, you know, you're going to be talking mostly politics. Yeah. I'm trying to do a little bit more and henceforth mm -hmm. you on politics then right. But I mean, it's, it's generally a political show. And yeah. the audience that, that I think you have is the entire audience. Mm -hmm. Unlike a, a, a niche market, if you will, yeah. you have the entire audience for anyone who picks it up and say, yeah. huh, yeah, that, I like this. Yeah. How oh, well, difficult I think was it, it to put together? It, you know, it, in some ways it was complicated be, because I don't think people had experienced themselves that way, right? That just mm -hmm. in a media outlet, I have a background in marketing. And if I'm selling, I had to sell to this age group, this demographic that wears this lipstick and read these books. And we had been used to being so segmented. Mm -hmm. And um, so I think the hardest part was convincing people that you are as well-rounded uh, as you are, <laughs> mm -hmm. although you had not seen yourself reflected that way. On the, on the other side, it was easy because that's how diverse you are. That's how diverse I am. That's how diverse people are. We have hobbies. We speak multiple languages. We have passports that take us to different places. We've eaten different food. Our view and lens with which we experience politics is based on this sort of dynamic nature of who we are. So on that level, I was really speaking to people who I knew on a daily basis, people who play the piano, who like jazz or who have a guitar, right? That we are very diverse. Um, it was interesting. I was on a radio show when we first started and the person was, it was funny because you know, you need some move radio and he became real silent and I was new to radio. So I had nothing to help with this dead air. And, um, he was like, these people are wonderful. I mean, I know some of them, where did you get them from? And I said, they're you, you know, like it, he, 
he 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 was so taken aback that he could relate to the people. He was even familiar with some of them personally, but he had just never seen so many perspectives of them so positive without a catch mm-hmm. in one publication. It was publication. their story. It was their story. Uh, given the same elegance and proper bandwidth and no hook to destroy their character at the end or that they became this way out of some glitch <laughs> and they're a yeah. rare find of a talent. Um, and just being very true to who we are as humanity that happens to tan at a different rate and have a different historical perspective because of that um, was was ref- was refreshing. So it was both hard and easy, but allowing people, which is why it was named the tray, which is the sort of nickname for the neighborhood, Third Ward, the tray. Um, I didn't because, know that, you know. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so there's a fifth word that they call the nickel, and that's the tray. Oh, um, okay. So that when the people owned it, and they said, no, this is not an external energy. This is us telling our story and connecting to the world from our point of view. And the ownership of community on it has really surpassed anything I imagined. And it has lasted longer than I expected because even when I say this is, you know, I need sleep, I can't do this. The people say, oh, that's okay. I have a story. Oh, that's a, oh you need a picture. Okay. I have pictures. And um, where have you been? And we need it back. And, and how can I help? And it's really a, um, I'm a steward for it, but it's much greater than I expected. What I love that you said, right? is um, you said you realized that there was a need for a magazine like this, not only locally, but one that can be viewed, can see, see your environment nationally and internationally. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you said nobody was doing it. So you know what? It was like, well, I guess I better do it. <laughs> yeah. I, and I, I think, but you know, that's an important way of thinking that we are not mm-hmm. led to think. And I think it's one of the reasons the society is in the state that it yeah. is in. Yeah. That a lot of us don't sit down and say, well, you know, if somebody's not doing it, I'm going to do it. We relegate it to the billionaires. Yeah. Uh, we, to, to, somehow too, too often we think they are more than they are when yeah. individually yeah. we are all good at doing what we want to do when yeah. we decide to go do it. Your thoughts? Yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting. I, I, I hope that one day I can find this image. But sort of early in this process, I saw there was like a picture of a sort of food bank sort of in this sort of desert area and there were two men leaned at like 45 degree angle holding this door open and the camera was on top of this wall hey Bertha there had to be hundreds of women and children on the other side just pushing but in their mind they were going against this massive force and I was like these two people have held back the will of the people on sheer will and if they would just unite as individuals and push collectively, there would have been no stopping them, but they were able to hold back hundreds of people because they had, like you said, entrusted that the machine was greater than their capacity. And they just kind of have to hope and wait and, and kind of go through it. So I do think it is important for us to reclaim our responsibility, but it's, it's work. And as much as it is to suffer, from the results of what they have chosen for our fate, which I don't know why we have grown to think that it would be in their best interest to choose what's in our best interest for their fate. Um, we, we do have to collect our responsibilities. And I think I connect with you, you connect with others, and hopefully that can inspire a kind of collective push. And, you know, I, I, I really love that. I mean, and I'm going to, in fact, I'm going to steal that and use that as well, because mm-hmm. here you, you talk about just two holding back and and in in, in effect that is what we have with society today Mm -hmm. isn't it yeah there's so much that we can do and we allow a few yeah to put that wrench in the gears right yeah yeah and even if we can see it we still say oh my gosh can you believe they put the wrench in the gear and it's like I can, but can you believe we let them and we sat there and we allowed it and we continue to allow it and we voted back in and we turn our head after we voted back in because we have social media things to do. I I don't know what the math is uh, and why we've become so entertained instead of responsible, but we definitely can do better. 
let me tell you, Stephanie, and I, I think it starts with, you know, telling these stories. In fact, I, when I got, you know, you, I, I don't think I've spoken to you in a few months. And no, yes, I no. got the email with the relaunch. I, was it a relaunch, right? Relaunch. Oh, oh, yes, yes, yes. Of the magazine. Yes. And then I clicked on it. And I was like, wow. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, Trey's back. Actually, I didn't know Trey was gone. But I was like, <laughs> I'm like, Trey's <laughs> back, you know. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm looking at it and it's like, wow, this is this is nicer. No, you have it on. Are you still doing the hard copy? Is it? Yes. Now? Yes. It's the hard copy. But, you know, as we're evolving in media and storytelling mm -hmm. um, and, and the weight of growth. Right. Um, it's one thing when we're just doing paper. It's one thing when we're just doing radio. It's another mm -hmm. thing when we're doing social. But we're at this like cusp of a new behavior. Mm -hmm. And so it. I had to kind of take a break to say, how do you really make it so that when people read a book that they can scan in to really get the interview that you might produce, right? Or how can they go from that interview to action mm -hmm. to purchase a book or to sign up for a, it's a petition or to, to be a part of a transformation behavior? Um, because the magazine by itself, I think, becomes a docile behavior. Mm -hmm. Right. Like we try and end all of our stories with. And now your next step is even right. if it's just to think about what your next step is. Um, so that was a part of that redesign is uh, four years ago. The idea of doing QR codes, which I had been trying, was <laughs> <laughs> it was it was, you know, it was alien speak, crazy talk. Yeah. It was taking two pages just to explain how to use the phone. and um, But the world has changed and people are familiar with the They're concept. No, they and know their QR code. Throw that camera on it and get to your site. Yeah. It's massive. So now we can revisit how do we better engage with radio. I mean, we are just a vehicle. And so now ideally we can better serve what you're doing and amplify that. And we can better serve, you know, events that are happening and amplify their ticket engagement. And to just really help those who are pushing reach more to help push um, us to a better society. So yes, thank you for, for seeing it, but it's, it's hard to reinvent. It's real nice to say, I have a template. I've designed it. I've got three sections and two this and I'm done. Uh, but we do have to keep evolving. And, that's uh, a magical I word. It. Yeah, yeah. It's the magic is always to, to, you know, I mean, I, I remember before I was doing this, when I was doing most of the software, mm -hmm. I was really wedded to a particular platform. And I, I, I was telling all the people why it is, <laughs> why I was so right to stay on this platform. And you guys don't know what you're doing <laughs> by going to all these other things. Yeah. And I remember one night a guy said to me, you know, you can, you can keep that attitude. And I guarantee you one thing, you'll be broke in a year. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he just kind of, and yeah. I never, I didn't sleep that night until I had a new, <laughs> a new plan. I had yeah. a new, you know, it, it's amazing yeah. how, you know, you listen to, mm -hmm. when you listen to good advice and you, you don't yeah. want to know when you're listening to good advice, yeah. Yeah. listening to, listen to what you've done. Now, uh, before, before we go here, tell us a little mm -hmm. bit about, because first of all, I like the story about you saw a need mm, mm -hmm. and you said i'm going to fulfill the need i want you to yes. empower others not necessarily to find a need that you found because you found it in a particular niche yeah but empower others to say if you see something act on it don't uh, yeah. just assume you can't let me yes. hear it from you well you know it's really interesting so the acting on it and being super excited about acting on it don't always go together because right. you because you know it's work right like in your spirit you know uh, when you decided to do, you know, engaging and educating us on the, the, the nuances of politics, the, the good and the bad of the politics, to what we can do next. When you opened that door, I'm sure you said, oh, this isn't a one week project, right? This is a weekly commitment. This is mm -hmm. research. This is reading. This is distilling it to the core things. And this Daily is... now, my friend, daily now. <laughs> It's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. I mean, and I don't think people understand that really that's a, that's love for people, right? Mm -hmm. That you say, I could be at home. I could do nine to five only and I could be done, but, but I'm not aiding our society. Mm -hmm. So I'm deciding that every day I'm going to put my family balance in a way that's 
community first ish, right? Like however that math works out, but it's a massive sacrifice. So when I did say it out loud and some of it was just like the colleague you uh, spoke with, once you say it out loud and someone overhears it, Mm -hmm. well, there's the accountability. So I was complaining at the bus stop (laughs) with my son going to school and uh, the person who reminded me like, well, okay, well, you know, what are you going to do? It's like, "Ah, I think (laughs) you got to do something. (laughs) <laughs> and then every time I saw her at the bus stop, how's that going? Right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, and then after the first one came out and it was so well received and the question becomes, well, when is the next one? Right. So right. you get on this ride uh, that you have to kind of um, know that this is really what gives you peace, though. Right. Like that you're given these visions and people say and this was very telling for me. Um, you know, what's the difference between your purpose and like, you know, your sort of natural skills and the purpose are these gifts that whether or not anyone else understands them, they keep you up at night. You have this. Exactly. Right. This desire to knit. It doesn't matter what it is. It's this desire to, to tell story, to engage, to provoke thought. But if you don't do it, you're missing your moment. Mm-hmm. and and it will haunt you and you'll look up and see someone other someone younger someone different living out that purpose and resent right resent that you didn't do it as well not that you didn't have the opportunity but you opted out of sharing your gift and you know that is powerful i mean you opted out you resent and that you opted out wow yeah. that is yeah. powerful yeah so i so I, I i i hope to stay around people who keep me honest with that gift and who give me like your colleague did a hard talk like stephanie you know you can do mm-hmm. better or stephanie uh, that's not really you or Stephanie, you're falling off course. Cause we all fall off course. Right. Absolutely. Um, and get back to really where you are best, um, utilized. And so that's kind of where the, the book came in and, and we use local, not local talent, but just all talent. Right. So if you can take photography, if you're a photographer or videographer, so how can we best celebrate that talent? People who want to be activists, but they don't know how to brand or they don't know how to communicate. They know how to live it out. But how do you actually convey that when you're not in the room? How do you how do you build a a, a, um, a base or how do you write your book or how do you market your book? Like, so I, I just hope everyone, you know, what's sort of been nagging you, mm-hmm. even if as a kid, people said, okay, so I'm sure you can agree with it. People like in, in school as a student, Stephanie, I mean, you really need to sort of sit in your desk and you chat a little too mm-hmm. much. <laughs> and so you begin to ingest that. But when you were put on this planet to, to host an amazing radio show and to write incredible books and well, that's in you. And whether or not the third grade teacher saw that, or the third grade teacher could manage that, right? Mm-hmm. Not that they didn't see it, but they, 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 just, they just couldn't process it at that point. It's still in you, right? Um, I like that. Yeah, it's still in you. So I would just hope that people would know that it'll feel wonderful to finally write that book or to finally support this candidate or, or even people who organize well. Mm-hmm. Hey, someone like me. <laughs> right. Who does not? <laughs> but Actually, I'm, I think you're a good organizer. <laughs> well, thank I've seen you, you at KPFC. Yeah. <laughs> well, I have my moments. Thank you. <laughs> but like, you need other people who might be more analytical or someone who's a bit more mathematical to help crunch numbers. Or, like, we all have a way that we can aid in that mm-hmm. pushing process. Um, and it might not seem as a gift, but even someone who cleans well. To be able to come in and to activate and someone has put order in your space, that's not a, 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 a negative gift. That's a necessary gift. Absolutely. While, you know, while everyone else is doing what their gifts are. So, yeah. Well, let me ask you, Stephanie, before we go here, please tell folks, first of all, how they can find that magazine, how th- for those who want to do it online, how they do it, for those who want hard copies, how do we do it? And I'm going to have it in a blog post for this interview as well. Wonderful. Well, it's the traymag.com and it's featured, it's under the featured publication for this month. So that way you can see the new one, but all the other ones. Um, we are at the Trey Mag on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I'm really hoping, and I, I you know, I'm going to say this 
on air. I've always sort of sort of changed you down said somehow we have to find a way to fuse this. And I, with what you're doing, and I've always just felt like that's the voice that if I can figure out how to weave this in to where we can do that together. But ideally, by the next time our paths cross, um, we can we can we can really have synergy around our platforms. I just I think it would just be excellent. Um, and I think people really just, I learn a lot from listening to your show and I'm driven to do in a way, and I can read through the noise better. It's like, that was this, you know, uh <laughs> but let me tell you, I am always open for synergy all mm -hmm. the time. And mm -hmm. like I, like I tell our audience all the time, we're open books here. We, yeah. and not only that, but we are people, people, you know, yeah. we're, yeah. we're people, people, we want to engage <laughs> folk and all that good yeah. stuff. So um, you gave us the link to your magazine. Yeah, uh, I have to put you on the spot. However, mm -hmm. every single interview, if you've listened to some of them, I asked the last question. What would you have liked me to ask you that I didn't? Well, um, what I don't think there's anything else that I have a good answer for. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but I, you know, I just what I what you didn't ask, which is good, is sort of what is on the horizon because uh, I don't quite know what comes next. But um, growth and and how we can grow better is is really what I, I would hope um, you didn't ask that I'd have a better answer for when next comes. I think that's a good enough answer. <laughs> Stephanie Coleman is the publisher of Trey Magazine. It yeah. is the definitive voice of the yeah. community. Thank you so kindly for Thank having you. been on Politics <laughs> Done Right. I love your show. Keep up the great work. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to, trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.